Hi and welcome to Framed, a let's play with a focus on cinematography. My name's Aubrey and I'm going to be your host. I have illustrated what this channel is going to be about in a previous, my only other previous upload at this point. So if you're interested in kind of understanding the more of the details about what I'm thinking, what has influenced me with this channel, um, then, you know, go ahead and watch that video, kind of learn a little bit about me and the philosophy behind this channel. Um, but a real quick synopsis of that is that I'm basically going to be doing a let's play uh, and it's going to be focusing on explaining step-by-step -step good cinematography. So a lot of games are regarded as really great, um, have really great cinematography elements, but I've noticed on the internet that nobody kind of explains what they are. You're just supposed to either understand it or not. It's sort of an exclusionary club if you're you know, somebody's like, hey, this has amazing visuals, and not just like visuals as in something that's well rendered, like the textures look amazing, or like the dust particles that float around or whatever, you know, um, but as in the lighting, the framing, the composition. Um, nobody really, to my knowledge at least, has explained that step by step. Um, and I think a Let's Play format's perfect for it because you can walk around, play the game, and see each little detail and have it explained, uh, at least what I think about it. Now, I'm not an expert, so definitely if you guys know something or pick up something that I don't, chime in, write to me, I would love to hear. Um, yeah, so I don't wanna ramble on too long with preface, that's what that other video is for. So I think I'm just gonna get dive right in. Full disclaimer, also, this will, I'm assuming that you have seen Uncharted 4 or have played through it. If you haven't, there's going to be spoilers. I, I can't avoid it to talk about the theme of this game. I'm gonna to have to talk about different things uh, later in the game. So this whole series is gonna to be totally spoilery. So if you don't like that, uh, if you haven't played Uncharted 4 and you want to, play Uncharted 4, it's so good. And then come back and watch my uh, channel and see why it's so good. So I'm assuming Henry Avery is real, but I actually do not know. Do you guys know? I don't. He has to be. All the rest of them have been. Hmm. So I love that we start in Medius Race in the middle of action, um, as is Uncharted's way. And right now you can see, we're gonna pan to Nathan Drake, of course. And you can see right in the foreground on his wheel, on the steering wheel, is that Nate has a wedding band. And um, instead of, uh, usually he's always, Nate's always had a ring, but it's been the sick part of his magnet ring that he wears around his neck before, um, symbolizing an adventure and ex exploration. It's been a huge deal in Nathan's life. But he's traded that ring in, well, I mean, Marlo died with that ring. But uh, instead of having that ring in, we get an immediate different tone that there is a wedding band and that's on the forefront, the foreground of the frame, but also kind of on the forefront of Nathan's mind. And a lot of times Nate's environment uh, is reflective of his mood, his emotional state. And this is definitely no different in my opinion. Um, they, he's on these tumultuous seas and we know that Nate right now is headed towards Libertalia right after he had a big fight with Elena. So, so yeah, so it's sort of showing, reflecting how he is feeling really upset <laughs> right now. You'll also notice that there's a strong blue color palette. Um, blue is really used a lot. It's used um, even in the, the special edition PlayStation. It's like the main color of that PlayStation. Um, but you'll notice blue and actually orange are used a lot in this game. And blue and orange are opposites on the color wheel. Um, they're called complementary colors for this reason uh, because they're opposites on the color wheel. I need to get around. Uh, so. It shows this sort of division and this sort of um, just intense opposites, basically. So, yeah. You'll also notice that Libertalia is like very jagged in design and very rocky. So right here, Nate falls into the fetal position. And at first, that's of course just a way to show like a natural reaction to protect your head, your body, your mouth and throat. But it's also sort of, He's in the water. He's sort of almost in this womb-like state. It's sort of a rebirth, um, the painful rebirth for Nathan. It's a, He's not doing too well. He, he's getting a lot of emotional turbulence. As you can see, literally here, he's caught in turbulence. 
And so again, the state is sort of reflective. His environment is reflective of Nathan's mood and feeling. Um, yeah, so it's sort of this abyss and the title of this game is A Thief's End. It's, so there's a lot of imagery of almost almost death like this void. It's, it's uh, repeated throughout this game a lot. On a completely unrelated note, I'm a huge fan girl of Sam. So again, you'll see, I mean, Libertalia before looks very welcoming and uh, leader in the game, but right now uh, uh, you can tell that this is, the game, to, the level design is like super jagged. It's on these rocky seas and, oops, okay. Nope, I did not die. I will soon probably. Okay, I'm gonna go in a circle apparently. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry you have to witness my bad gameplay sometimes. Um, Anyways, so you'll notice that Libertalia's is very jagged, this very rocky place. I love this transition where you hear Sam calling out for Nathan and in his flashback in the memory, it ties it together by the nun saying his name, Nathan. So right away we start with this divided imagery. Nate has a black eye on one side, he's bruised and uh, bumped up and on the other side he's okay. You'll also notice that Nathan is divided in colors again. There's that blue half, he, half of his face is in blue, sort of depressed, uh, upset, and the other half is in red, or excuse me, orange, where it's this kind of, pa his passion lies, his passion for adventure, his, also his anger sometimes, it's those intense emotions. Um, it's kind of reflective of his current emotional state. Doesn't give him the right to just snatch it from me. You could argue that it's just because that lamp is there, uh, giving off that orange glow. But, um, and maybe that's true. But I think it also is. Naughty Dog really thinks about what they're doing. So I would argue that. I mean, it is so emphasized that blue and orange division throughout the game that I don't think it's any accident. Nothing. You'll also notice that the nun just walked over his passion. She literally cast a shadow on it. And so she was kind of putting a damper on that I'm anger and also that passion. You seem insistent. You can notice that there's also a crucifix right in between them. Um, it's first of many, many crucifixes that will show up. Actually, later it's St. Dismas things, but... Um, and of course they're in a Catholic orphanage, but there's going to be another cross right about now. Yep, over his right shoulder. Uh, so... And of course, that's just uh, Sam flashing a flashlight, and it's the light coming through the window pane. But I don't think it was by any accident that they showed a cross. Um, so yeah, so you'll see crosses repeated throughout this, as because of Saint Dismas, and you'll also notice groups of three um, a lot in this game. So there's already two, one, two, and then three crosses right there, um, and. I think that reflects Jesus' crucifixion a lot, uh, with the good thief and the bad thief and Jesus. So, you know, they didn't have to put two cross, three crosses right on the same wall. You know, there's not crucifixes over every single kid's bed. It's just those three. So, you know, it's sort of a reference to that. I also like how, um, you can tell Nathan has been an adventurer and loving adventure since he was a kid. Adventure life. Definitely not Nacho Geo <laughs> magazine because that has an orange border. <laughs> um, you can also see the map and the drawings. I, I wonder if Nate drew those. I bet he did. He's been drawn since he was a kid, I bet. So you can see out the window here and of course you see Sam shining the light to come towards or to beckon you. But, uh, and of course, that's just game design being like, hey, come this way. And it's also a visual for Nate to know that Sam's out there. But I also think it sort of shows how Nate feels about Sam a little bit. It's you. He's like his guiding light in a way um, at this point in his life. He like That is who oh, Nate really primarily you. looks up to. And an unrelated cinemagraphic note, but more of a gameplay no note, is that I love how Nate moves in this game. Young Nate moves. It's so different than when he's older and he's more experienced and limber. He's just a kid here. He hasn't had all those years of experience climbing and he's not fully developed, so he moves a little bit more sluggishly. Oh, oops, okay. I have to jump back over here for a second. I forgot to mention something. Too slippery. <laughs> um, 
So you'll notice the blue and orange theme again. There's these very orange lanterns with this blue sky right next to it. And you'll notice that there is moth moths to the flame. And of course, you know, it looks about, I don't know, summer, late summer, early fall, maybe something like that. Um, so of course there would be moths just around lights and lanterns. So that's just realistic. But I also think Naughty Dog put it there because like I said before, I think the orange primarily represents those intense emotions. So that passion for adventure, those angry, the, all those intense things. But um, right now, Sam is being drawn, or excuse me, Nate's being drawn to Sam for that lure of adventure. And he's like a moth to the flame. He can't help it. Whether it's good or bad for him, he is drawn to it. And I think Donny Dog put that there on purpose. Sorry to have to reclimb stuff. Um, but you'll notice at any time he's about to do, well, at least in the next two chapters, when he's about to, I'm going to see if it's in the later chapters, but um, when Nathan is being drawn to, towards adventure and towards Sam, he's like a moth to the flame. And sort of like the story of Icarus, that does not usually end well. <laughs> so we'll see how it ends in this game. and quiet. Uh-oh. Isn't it our job to help boys like him? In the meantime, I'm neglecting the other dozen boys under my care. <sighs> what do you want me to do? You know my opinion. <laughs> I'm not ready to give up on him yet. Sister you Catherine, you're kind of a bitch. So something I've also been puzzling over and I haven't been able to figure out is that why they put this orchid here. Maybe it's as simple as they just wanted to add a flower to it, but I don't, I feel like it's not. Um, so I was a big nerd and I used to look into flowers, symbolic meanings a lot. And the ones for orchid, there's so many, it's also like from teleflora.com or whatever. So it's not like the most reliable source. So I don't know. I don't know why they put this orchid here. If you guys have ideas on why they put an orchid on this desk here. Let me know. Hit me up. Maybe it's nothing. I feel like it's something though. Also, <laughs> another fun uh, thing to notice is that right underneath Nathan's chin is the game Strife instead of the game of life. It's sort of a foreshadowing a little bit of how Nate's life is going to be filled with Strife, <laughs> which, is an, which is unfortunate for Nathan. Um, you'll also notice that you can see Sam right in that window uh, past the pillar on the left. Um, it's, I just like that it almost looks like not your reflection, but you can see that he's just crouching and waiting there, um, luring you in. I think that's a nice little touch. Um, you'll also notice with when Sam's around, you can see over, excuse me, uh, over here, there's a guardian or an angel. Um, and a lot of times in, uh, coming up in the game, there's going to be, when Sam's around, there's going to be angels. Um, and in Catholicism, there's this belief that you have this guardian angel that helps keep you safe. And right now, Nate, the only guardian he has is Sam. And so he kind of, for better or for worse, Sam is his guardian. Um, uh, yeah. I also like this little detail over here, the star list. And you can see the different kids' names on here. And you can see that they were about to write Nate, but it got partially erased and scratched out. So he is not on the star list right now. I think it's a fun detail that Sister Catherine is smoking out the window, like a little dirty secret. <laughs> it's a little bit of a hard edge to her. She probably has a stressful job taking care of a bunch of 12 year olds. It's a nun. I don't know. I wonder whose dreams those were. Again, moths to the flame right right in the foreground, right before you get uh, right in front of Sam. I don't think that was an accident that they put that lantern there. You can see that Sam's shining that light again. Like I said, a matter Sam, of game design. Hold up. But also a little bit of uh, symbolism, I think. <laughs> Okay, well, <laughs> whoops, made Nathan die, sorry, hit circle instead of X. <laughs> sorry guys, uh, I'm not the best game player I know, I'm sorry. 
Sorry, you have to witness this. But it's about the cinematography, not the gameplay, as I have emphasized enough times probably already. But you'll hear it later, because I'm not very good. Sorry. <laughs> Almost there. Come on to the flame again. I also love how Naughty Dog is able to um, is able to animate people's emotions like the the characters emotions they animate it so well <laughs> it's amazing like right here when sam notices that nathan has a black eye you can see it him register it it's amazing and the concern and everything it's nothing you told me you'd stay out of trouble though he was talking shit about it of course, Sam is always in that denim jacket. It's one of his uh, character designs, so you'll notice it throughout the game. He's in denim. All right, you just gotta learn to laugh it off. You wouldn't. Well, do as I say, not as I do. Used to. Oh my god, I got that told to me all the time as a kid. It used to make me so mad. Do as I say, not as I do. Ugh. I understand it as an adult now, but as a kid, it pisses you off. And it couldn't wait till Christmas. It's outside. What happened to us staying out of trouble? Uh, this is an exception. Mm hmm. <laughs> nice jump. Come on. Yeah, give me a hand. Shit, right. This is just feeding you enough. I can hear Sam's concern for his little brother. Sam is a good older brother, despite their flaws. He's he's trying to take care of Nate, but he's only he's only a kid himself too. I feel so bad for them. How's Father Duffy doing? He's the one decent guy in there. You should come and say hi. Nah, I don't need the guilt. Oh, struggling. Sorry about that, guys. Oh my gosh. Okay. All right. Okay, there we go. Finally. Oh, the this butt way. slide mechanic. I am not a huge fan of you, but it's okay. I'm getting there. That was easy. So I really like this upcoming chunk of dialogue. I, I, I did. At least I thought I did. No, it doesn't matter. We're gonna take the high road. The high road? Just follow me. Watch this. Whoa. And now, we take the high road. Have you done this before? Uh, once or twice. So, of course, Sam means he, they are literally going to take a higher road because this one is blocked off. Um, but it's also sort of, you know, taking the high road is a common uh, euphemism for doing the right thing and doing what's hard despite, uh, or doing the right thing even when it's hard. Uh, and so Nate replies, have you done this before? Of course, literally meaning have you climbed up this roof and with a rope before but also sort of asking it's a little bit of i think a double entendre being like have you taken the high road before like have you usually kind of <laughs> like to uh play by your own rules and sam replies once or twice i just think that's funny i also think um you see right now nate's in light uh he's on he's just about to enter this shadow this uh and of course it's just the lighting but he's about to enter and do bad things, like get off the property and climb and do these more dangerous things. So I think it's interesting that like, even that little subtle lighting. So what you been up to? Been working mostly. You still dating that girl? Oh, uh, Kristen? Uh, on again, off again. Currently off again. No guts, no glory. Uh, whoa, whoa. 
I like how Nate just gets that Stop little it. bit of tension. He's not, he's not uh, adult Nate. He's not going to be able to do all the things that his adult self would be able to just jump off roofs. It's some of his first time jumping off a roof. Of course he's scared. Nothing to it. <laughs> Stay with me. What I want to know is when did Sam start to like be like, hey, I'm going to just climb up on roofs and jump around on him. Like he had to decide that first, I'm assuming, since he's the older brother. Like, yeah, let's just do this. <laughs> yeah, totally. <laughs> that, I don't know. I bought you, but I did not do that totally. as a kid. I was also yeah, terrified yeah. of heights, so I guess that's sort of a null point. Did you guys do that? Ever like, hey, let's just jump around on roofs, like parkour. There's a jump coming up. Okay. Makes sense how Nate got into it. His older brother kind of, not made him, but like encouraged it. Okay. I guess you could say it runs in their Down. blood. Nice and easy. Nice and easy. Oops. Was that a son? That's a son. Catholic guilt runs strong. <laughs> you ready, Tarzan? Yeah. All right, go ahead. You'll notice again the blue and orange theme. You'll see it a lot in this game. Color palette, excuse me, not theme. I wonder what city they're in. Do you guys know? I should have researched that. Nice view, huh? Yeah. <laughs> Not bad. <laughs> you ever been up here before? This particular one? No. But you do know where you're going, right? Eh, more or less. Oh, Sam, you like to live off the cuff. No one can hold you down, that's for sure. Wait here, and you watch me. I like the self-talk they make Nate have. I would definitely need some self-talk. You're very cavalier with your brother's life, Sam. I don't know. I guess you're 15, I'll forgive you. I did it. Or 14 or whatever you're supposed to be. Of course you did. I feel like he's telling that more to himself than to comfort Nate, but whatever. Follow me. you take this one really yeah really I'll follow your lead like that we're out all right so you'll notice in a divided theme again uh not quite yet but in just a couple like a couple seconds here uh between the color palette and how nathan and um sam actually stand they stand on opposite sides of the bike that's a low blow but uh just right about now they're gonna be ending up and you'll notice that Nate is in red, or excuse me, in orange. That kind of passion, that Anytime anger. You pull a stunt like this, is when you're and he's on the opposite side of bike. It's, and then Sam's in blue, you know, that sort of depressed smart, feeling. Good. He knows he's going to have to leave Nate, and he's sad about it. He doesn't really want to. So he's in the blue, and Nate's well. in the orange, because really well. he's upset and angry. Gotta leave town for a little bit. What's a little bit? Like uh, a year. At the most, and then I'll be back before you even know it. Right. And then you'll see that You're Sam's face now is. Come on, don't be so dramatic. What, so it wasn't bad enough to leave oh, me in that place? Right about. 
How could you do this to me, Sam? Now is divided because he's upset with Nathan that he doesn't understand him. But he's also sad that he has to leave him. So he's kind of angry. And he has that division across his face. He's torn. He doesn't really want to leave Nathan. But he feels like he has to help provide for him. And you see that in the lighting on his face. It's the best thing for you right now. Right? Just gotta trust me on that one. It's not fair. Yeah. Nothing about our lives has been fair. Yep, and you'll see that division really emphasized right here. <laughs> that blue and yellow. Excuse me, blue and orange. You know, Gosh, the bike wasn't the only colors, surprise. Right? Um, you'll also notice right in between them, uh, the brothers, is in the background is this danger high voltage. So the path they're about to take, you know, I mean, they didn't have to put that danger of high voltage there. It could have just been a brick wall. But I think Naughty Duck put it there because it's like the path they're about to take is going to be dangerous. Sort of a foreshadowing. What do you say we go and get it back? You mean steal it? It's not stealing if it was ours to begin with. I'm pretty sure the cops aren't going to see it that way. Well, then let's not get caught. You ready for this? Hell yeah. Nate's face is divided again. And I love that transition. It does it so well with the black eye on his face, like, I don't know, 10, 20 years later, whatever it's supposed to be. Um, and then you'll see Nate's again in that blue denim jacket, just like he was in the previous scene. So it transitions really smoothly from the past to more of the closer to the present. Um, you kind of get the idea that uh, Sam's still around because he's wearing that blue denim jacket because normally Nate wears thermals, but right now he's in blue denim. And his brother's around. We weren't fighting, huh? Right, little guy? Hey, give me a call when you're tall enough to ride the rides. Nate, you were like two inches taller than him. Spanish is so rusty. <laughs> Do not remember most of that. Moth in the flame again. Come on. How long am I supposed to be in here? Huh? Where's the toilet? You looking at it? Have fun. I will. Gracias. So I love this transition. It goes from Nate being beaten and he's in this dark solitary sort of like I keep mentioning the word abyss but he's in this sort of a dark abyss crumpled and alone in his thoughts he's literally on the floor I think is he dead is he not and get this image of this looming shadowy figure over him oh, man, I was not good dream too. Hey, hey, hey. Oh, that texture on that right. wall of the paint peeling off that's amazing Honey dog, you do such a good job. All right. All right. So I'm going to end it here for right now as my first playthrough. Thank you for listening. Um, I hope you continue to watch and maybe even subscribe and like my videos. Uh, have a great week.